I'm here. So I've been coming to Tech Tuesdays uh, ever since we started, uh, and I haven't spoke. That's been a very, very hard thing for professors. <laughs> uh, <laughs> audiences. I'd uh, love to have the opportunity to rattle on about wherever we're, whatever we're excited about, but I've resisted uh, because the idea with, with uh, Tech Tuesdays uh, was this is kind of a community-led event. So, but I did make an exception here and uh, put forward my name. So you got me for the next uh, 10, 15 minutes. So what I wanted to talk about tonight uh, was our evolving entrepreneurial ecosystem uh, here in the Rio Grande Valley. We've heard about uh, the valley tonight, some of its challenges, uh, and uh, believe it or not, I have primarily a positive message tonight. So uh, as a uh, entrepreneurship professor uh, here at the university, you know, why uh, do I uh, and, and some others uh, choose to participate in tech? Tuesdays. Uh, put another way, why do I choose to pay for the food? Uh, <laughs> the service I've provided since uh, uh, the founding of this organization. Uh, what we have here uh, that I'm gigantically uh, enthusiastic about is we really have a community of people uh, interested in uh, technology uh, and combining that with an entrepreneurial mindset uh, with the idea uh, that we can grow something from combining these uh, forces. At least as an entrepreneurship professor, uh, what I would like to see emerge from here, and what has emerged from here uh, occasionally, uh, is uh, the formation uh, of a business and the growth uh, of that business. Now, what we're doing here uh, is not unique. Uh, and when Olmo first came, uh, and Jorge came to me and talked about launching Tech Tuesdays, immediately what I thought about uh, was the Homebrew Computer Club. How many of you are familiar with the Homebrew Computer Club? Yeah, all right, hands up. This is exactly what we're trying to do here. This is a community of people uh, at, uh, who got together uh, at Stanford University, I believe beginning in 1975, uh, and wanted to talk about computers. Uh, and from this little group grew uh, companies such as Apple Computer. The way uh, Steve Wozniak tells the story was he was really shy at the time. <coughs> I was gigantically excited about uh, computers and the community uh, at the club. Uh, so he came there, uh, he, he was too shy to actually ask questions or participate in the dialogue, but he would bring his stuff and his little circuit boards and things uh, and play with those in the back and a bunch of people would come around him uh, towards the end of the presentation and uh, he could relate with people there. And uh, kind of the, the story goes that uh, he and Jobs started uh, Apple Computer to really be able to impress their friends uh, at the home group. So at least uh, when we got this started, this is what I was thinking. And I think uh, we're along our way. Maybe not to create the next Apple, uh, but at least uh, strengthening our community and our entrepreneurial ecosystem here uh, in the RGB. So uh, I'm talking about the entrepreneurial ecosystem. Tech Tuesday is just one uh, part of that broader uh, ecosystem. Of course, uh, as a professor, you're talking about the phenomena, such as an entrepreneurial ecosystem. You have to have a definition. So we've got one up there. Uh, this is basically the environment that helps make, uh, convinces people to be an entrepreneur, uh, tech-based or otherwise, uh, and actually facilitate the growth uh, of whatever they're trying to accomplish. So I think most of us here uh, would admit that in the past, our RGD entrepreneurial ecosystem has not been ideal. Uh, I was going to put some other words there that weak, <laughs> uh, uh, especially for tech entrepreneurship. Um, but I think uh, uh, things are getting better rapidly. My purpose today is to convince you, uh, not only that our entrepreneurship uh, ecosystem is rapidly changing, uh, but we here in the room actually have an opportunity to leave uh, this movement uh, and make uh, the Rio Grande a much better place, and I think we're on our way to doing that. So uh, when you have uh, entrepreneurial ecosystems uh, that really create uh, businesses uh, and wealth for the community. Uh, you know, this doesn't happen randomly. Uh, there is a spark uh, and a community that grows up around that spark. So lots of times we're jealous here in the valley about places like the Silicon Valley uh, and Austin. But if you actually look at the history of these regions, Silicon Valley at the start wasn't Silicon Valley. It was just a place in California that had some nice orchards. Uh, and what the at least if you read a bunch of literature here about what happened uh, in the area, uh, was that you had some people, a 
basically got together and, and made things happen. One of the really movers here was this Fred Terman, uh, who was a professor at Stanford and uh, uh, educated at MIT and Stanford. Uh, and uh, uh, he was graduating uh, students uh, that all had to go to the East Coast uh, to get good jobs. He didn't like this, uh, so he was encouraging his students and other faculty. He eventually became dean of the School of Engineering, College of Engineering at Stanford, uh, and uh, uh, helped people such as Hewlett Packard, uh, one of his uh, students, I actually started a little company called Hewlett Packard. <laughs> and that's really, uh, you know, uh, if you read uh, the history of Silicon Valley, how things kind of got started. Of course, he's not solely responsible, uh, but he got things moving, developed the community around them based on technology, based on entrepreneurship, and uh, of course, Silicon Valley has emerged over the years uh, in where it was. So you look at the, and study other entrepreneurial ecosystems, you see there's similar types of things happen. A group of people uh, got together and really decided we wanted to create something, wanted to do something special. And uh, we talked about how Silicon Valley wasn't originally Silicon Valley. Uh, Austin, of course, uh, that's uh, quite uh, our neighbor, uh, up north 300 miles. I think one of the hottest uh, technology entrepreneurship uh, hotspots in the world right now, deservedly so. But if you actually look at the history of Austin, as recently as the uh, mid 70s, early 70s, uh, somewhere around there, Austin uh, was just this little cow town with the university uh, and uh, uh, state government. And uh, uh, that's pretty much all that was happening in, in Austin. And uh, uh, a spark uh, called George Kosmetsky, uh, who was the founder of Teledyne and uh, uh, the dean of the College of Business uh, at UG Austin for 16 years, uh, really kind of led the charge and uh, uh, got uh, the entrepreneurial ecosystem to support tech company uh, going in Austin. Uh, he's famous for actually getting up at uh, 4.30, or getting to the office at 4.30 in the morning. And if you wanted to see George and Dr. Kosmetsky, that was the time to do so. You would wander by his office as long as you got there at 4.30 in the morning, and we'll cornflakes with him. <laughs> and uh, uh, talk uh, about uh, what you had going on. Uh, Mr. Kosmetsky, Dr. Kosmetsky, and some other people in Austin were the early backers of uh, uh, Michael Dell, which of course created the computer company. Uh, and with that, and with a bunch of other forces and uh, effective partnering, uh, we created something, or they created something really special in Austin. So uh, I'm not arguing that we're going to become the next Austin, the next Silicon Valley, uh, but we have an opportunity uh, to create something better uh, than what we have now. Uh, I am predicting uh, that we will go from having a poor entrepreneurial ecosystem, at least supporting tech companies, uh, to not uh, Silicon Valley style, uh, but at least uh, good. Uh, reasons for a positive outlook. I've got uh, four primary ones here. I'm going to cover those in my next uh, five or ten minutes or until Omo gives me the book in front and center of the direction. <laughs> I think you have a lot more leverage. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> you, brought the, you, you brought the food. You <laughs> Stay till it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, reasons for a positive outlook. Uh, community groups and educational entrepreneurs rapidly gain legitimacy as institutionalized components of uh, our regional business development and education efforts. Uh, talk about those, and we're a part of that here. Uh, new forms of entrepreneurial education recognized as legitimate activities at uh, UTRGB. Now, uh, lots of crazy things have gone on with the merger of our two schools, uh, but at least for entrepreneurship uh, education, uh, it's going to contribute to our entrepreneurial ecosystem. This has been a gigantic but good change, uh, and I'll talk about uh, some of those here shortly. Uh, one thing that's also we're going to talk about that uh, uh, is a reason uh, to be enthusiastic about what we're doing is that entrepreneurship support programs uh, are regarded as legitimate business development activity by cities now, as it necessarily been that case in the past. So I would argue also that these efforts are facilitating the start and growth of entrepreneurial firms, including tech focus in the RGB. All this is coming together, uh, and I think we're actually making rapid progress. At least that's what I see from the city, uh, <laughs> where I am. Uh, I was laughing at this. I was on Tech Tuesdays, and uh, uh, once we go to our other venue, our second part of Tech Tuesdays, I quiz him about uh, how uh, uh, Code RGV is going. 
but uh, uh, Renee and others have done fantastic things here. And uh, last I uh, talked with the city people, uh, you've almost convinced them uh, to give you access to a building. I'm not sure how that's going currently, and he's laughing, which I'm not sure is a good or a bad thing. Uh, but uh, for a nonprofit community group like Tech Tuesdays, like Code RGB, uh, to go to the city, uh, and uh, uh, perhaps uh, I'll have to find out more later, gain access to a facility and money to actually operate those to do things like uh, tech based education, uh, sprinkled uh, with an entrepreneurial mindset. That's uh, something that, at least to the best of my knowledge, we haven't had in the past. So uh, I know no, you're not a big fan of this uh, uh, article. particular article. I like the picture, though. Uh, I like yeah. the picture. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, Tech Tuesdays, we're definitely part of this. Uh, the thing about Tech Tuesdays here, as far as our entrepreneurial uh, and tech-based infrastructure, this is something we didn't have in the past. We can argue it's, uh, we would love to have uh, all of our seats filled here, uh, but uh, uh, we are making progress with uh, creating uh, a community that supports tech-based entrepreneurship. All right, uh, other signs of rapid progress within our entrepreneurial ecosystem. We talked a little bit about this tonight. Uh, we have all kinds of entrepreneurial, uh, education entrepreneurs uh, out there working typically within the K-12 system or the P-12 system, whatever we call it these days, uh, to infuse a tech and entrepreneurial mindset uh, in, in the, uh, those grades. One, an occasional participant in Tech Tuesdays is Rebecca Reynoso uh, with uh, uh, Raybotics. Uh, so these are some of the things they do. Kids get to play around with these and uh, uh, build these uh, robots as part of these educational programs. I think he's doing pretty well with this program. One of my former students, Ernesto Villarreal, actually started a college first <coughs> program, uh, which does similar types of things. Uh, they've got a forensic program that just launched to uh, get uh, students uh, at that level interested in uh, science and technology. Uh, and as an entrepreneur himself, that program, of course, is also sprinkled with the idea that, that if we've got this technology, we need to do something with it. Going to work for somebody else is perhaps an option. Uh, we're going to work uh, uh, creating your own company is part of the story also. So these things are being infused, at least uh, like I've seen that before. You talk about engineering for kids also, uh, another program that I think uh, these are all viable businesses uh, serving the sector of our educational community that, uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, we didn't really have before. All right, so uh, another change supporting our entrepreneurship ecosystem that I'm very excited about is uh, we will be launching, as part of the UTRTV College of Business and Entrepreneurship, an entrepreneurship major, uh, with a little bit of luck, and, and uh, funds our curriculum committees cooperate uh, in the fall of 2016. So we have not had this degree on our Edinburgh campus before, uh, and I think uh, formal entrepreneurship education uh, is not the only thing that needs to take place uh, to improve our entrepreneurial uh, ecosystem here, but as part of it, uh, and we're very excited to be launching uh, this program uh, next fall. Uh, this will be followed shortly, <coughs> hopefully, uh, by an entrepreneurial an entrepreneurship minor, uh, also to attract people from other disciplines. All right, so uh, here's another uh, bit of evidence about things we have going on with our entrepreneurial ecosystem and a reason to be gigantically excited about uh, where the valley's going. Uh, as I have West of Coast City Hall uh, up here from a Google shop. Anybody know about what we're doing at West of Coast City Hall? This is actually an old uh, uh, Albertsons building. Uh, Albertsons went bankrupt, at, and uh, the city took the building over. At least that's the way I've heard the story. One side of it, they have city offices. Uh, the other side, they have uh, the uh, West of Coast Economic Development Corporation office and some other space. The university uh, and West of Coast have come to an agreement so this is the city offices here. Uh, this is some uh, developed office here. Uh, this part here is uh, just a shell, uh, an empty uh, kind of airport hangar uh, type facility. Uh, we have signed an agreement, at least last I heard, uh, it was on President Bailey's desk, uh, to have this as a uh, UTRGV uh, business incubator. Uh, and actually set up uh, support.
support facilities and some other uh, facilities that uh, uh, UTRGV kind of needs a mid-valley presence, uh, but most of this will be entrepreneurship space. So really this is going to be the first time ever uh, at UTPA, Pan American University, whatever you want to <laughs> call us here, uh, that we've had a formal business incubator. This is important just to the ability to support the entrepreneurs, but it's equally important as far as uh, the idea that the university is taking responsibility uh, institutionally uh, to develop entrepreneurs uh, in new and different ways. Uh, oftentimes with a tech focus is, uh, is new and something to be uh, excited about and uh, uh, I'm excited about it. Now, uh, uh, I threw this slide in just to see if you're paying attention. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, we do not have the Central Texas Angel Investment Group down here. Angel Investment, as perhaps you know, uh, are uh, basically uh, uh, an individuals get together who can qualify as uh, uh, qualified investors, which means they have a, a significant amount of money. Uh, you have an organized club, uh, entrepreneurs who are looking to get uh, uh, start capital or early growth capital, oftentimes go to angel investment groups uh, to raise money. So go up there, you got a great idea, ask for 100,000, 200,000, uh, whatever it might be. Uh, we have not had a functional uh, angel investment group here in the Valley in the past. Uh, we have formed one now, it's still in the early stages. We don't have a website yet, that's why I borrowed from the Central Texas uh, uh, one. Uh, but we, did. we now have one of these organizations. We are looking for additional members. Uh, if you've got a lot of money and you want to join and invest in startups, uh, we'll take you. Uh, chances are good anyway. Uh, uh, so this is another exciting part of what we have uh, going on, adding uh, to our entrepreneurial ecosystem. One of the interesting things about this also uh, is that uh, if there is somebody down here who, say an entrepreneur comes in uh, from the Valley and asks for $200,000, uh, if they can get somebody here uh, within our local angel investment network, say to put up uh, 30, 40 grand, whatever, so it's kind of sanctioned by our organization. Uh, then this, uh, uh, the other funding needed uh, will be put out throughout the uh, Texas Angel Network. Uh, and so perhaps there's somebody up in Austin who's uh, really excited about the idea you have here uh, locally. Uh, you have to support locally. Uh, then uh, perhaps some of that additional money to get up to the 200000 you need uh, would come through the Central Texas uh, Angel Network or some other affiliated network uh, within the state. Mm -hmm. Corpus Christi's got one of these going now, and uh, it uh, uh, seems to be working out pretty well. All right, uh, some of these topics have come out uh, already, uh, but we are getting a school of medicine. As part of our school of medicine, of course, people are going to do a lot of uh, research and hopefully come up with uh, uh, various things that can be commercialized. Uh, as part of the school of medicine, we have a guy named Bill Marshall who uh, uh, is in the leadership uh, of the School of Medicine. He's a natural born entrepreneur, uh, has an MBA. We've actually signed him up to teach a master's level entrepreneurship class for us in the spring. Uh, so he's been affiliated with the University of South Florida's entrepreneurship program in the past, uh, which with his efforts and the other person who led that entrepreneurship center, won national awards for what they're doing. Not only, not only are we gonna have the facility, we have someone there who's uh, uh, in the leadership position who understands entrepreneurship very well. I think we're going to get cool stuff coming out of that. So Stargate, you mentioned Stargate. Uh, that's certainly new to the Valley, uh, shooting off rockets. Uh, as part of the, basically the $10 million that uh, we've got here locally for Stargate coming from a grant from the state of Texas, a uh, required part of our investment is to set up a focused business incubator where uh, hopefully we'll generate entrepreneurs that are doing something uh, uh, aerospace related. And there's gonna be a specialized facility there uh, to facilitate their growth. All right, so uh, the third part I've talked about is that cities are getting into the business of uh, facilitating uh, the development of early stage entrepreneurs. Uh, if any of you are familiar with tech space, that's what we have going on uh, in McAllen, uh, or perhaps a residence, uh, code RGV there. Uh, at least at the moment, last I heard. <laughs> Other things we have going on, uh, City Missions has been very aggressive also. They've set up Ruby Red Ventures, kind of a local venture capital group. Uh, people involved uh, in uh, uh, this have gotten uh, Ruby Red Ventures money uh, also. So a new source of funding for startup entrepreneurs and early growth entrepreneurs. This is one perhaps you haven't heard about. Uh, and again, the idea here is that supporting
Supporting early stage entrepreneurs has become a legitimate activity uh, for cities. I'm just talking about some of the things we have going on in our community. Other uh, communities, of course, want to match or, or do something better than what the, the city next to them is doing. Mission recently announced on October 15th uh, that they are basically uh, taking over an old Kmart building uh, that's right next to the city hall. And uh, they're basically turning that into an uh, education and uh, entrepreneurship support so something we have had in the past is going to support uh, entrepreneurs trying to do something special. All right. So I would argue that uh, it's still early, uh, but we are seeing signs. Uh, we've always had lots of entrepreneurship in the Valley, uh, but we're seeing signs that these specific initiatives are also being successful uh, in creating uh, uh, entrepreneurial, successful entrepreneurship uh, startups. So. Uh, First example here, of course, is uh, our one uh, great university spin-off. We have one of the co-developers of uh, the technology that turned into Fiber Rio, uh, operating uh, down on Military Highway. So uh, our spin-off uh, business commercialization efforts here at the university are bearing some fruit. We have uh, lots of other interesting startups bubbling around. Uh, this is. Uh, a little bit from Create the Bridge. Uh, Create the Bridge folks have also been involved here with uh, Tech Tuesdays. Uh, they just hired their 10th uh, person. Uh, so we're rapidly scaling. Who knows how much they will with Create the Bridge uh, as a very creative uh, media company. Uh, it's doing very well. Uh, I really like Create the Bridge because they invited me to a party last Friday. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't take much to bribe me. It doesn't take much at all. Uh, but they wanted to basically celebrate what they're doing and publicize what they're doing. So I had a little uh, activity uh, at the far location. And it's great because, again, I talked about how cities are now competing uh, more than they have in the past uh, to start up this type of business. Basically, their facility in FAR uh, was renovated. So it was an old uh, building uh, in downtown FAR. Uh, FAR people wanted to do something with that other than just have an abandoned building. So that I'm not sure they're paying anything for a lease, but I know the city of Mission came in and basically renovated the building. Uh, it looks fantastic. Uh, and little if any cost to create the bridge. So this is the type of competition we have uh, between cities we have had in the past uh, support this type of business. Now what you see here is basically a program. Not only are they doing uh, the web and uh, creative advertising campaigns for other companies, they're also using some of their time to develop their own products. Uh, so this is their first product. Uh, and uh, here we have kind of a bank of TVs. This is from the Friday event where they just launched Voyager, I believe it's called. Uh, and uh, you know, lots of people go to parties and they're uh, uh, putting things on Facebook or Instagram, uh, show their friends what a great time that they're having. And uh, they've got a software product that will aggregate all those uh, social media feeds, <coughs> throw them up uh, on a wall, uh, here covered by TVs. Kind of an interesting way to display that information and publicize it. Right? I thought it was really cool. So this is the own program uh, that they developed. Example of some of the creative things we have going on. Uh, another uh, initiative that I've been involved with uh, since the startup was the Innovators and Entrepreneurship Network uh, at the McAllen Chamber of Commerce. Uh, this has been a really fun environment uh, where uh, people from the community have gotten together. And I think the McCallum Chamber has done a fantastic job of facilitating the development of those ideas. Uh, they have some innovation grant awards where you can get $10,000 uh, typically used to uh, uh, file for intellectual property protection. People involved in Tech Tuesdays have got those $10,000. Uh, Roger Pacina, for example, with the drone company, uh, was a recipient of one of the McCallum Awards. Uh, just as an example of some of the other fun things uh, that's coming out of there, it is uh, last week they had uh, their annual good pitch competition. People get up and give their 30-second uh, uh, spiel of what they have going on. Uh, here we have uh, the three winners. Uh, and uh, they're kind of doing some interesting stuff. Uh, so uh, Sam, uh, his uh, wife was uh, uh, cutting up food one night and uh, sliced her hand. So we're thinking entrepreneurially, we developed a uh, device here that uh, uh, people can use to avoid slicing out their fingers as they're preparing food. 
I'm not doing a very good job selling this. <laughs> <laughs> this is a viable product that he's actually producing and I believe generating a sales uh, he took the top uh, award. I don't know how many of you have met Lamar Jones. Uh, he's uh, a great guy uh, and uh, he took a family recipe and uh, developed the uh, uh, Jink barbecue sauce. Uh, so it was quite a show he likes to sing and uh, half of his uh, good pitch uh, uh, last uh, uh, Thursday was him singing. <laughs> uh, he's done very well. Uh, he's got this product and he's competed as part of HEB uh, um, Good Picks selection process and it looks like he's going to get his barbecue sauce on uh, 100 HEB store shelves uh, here in the very near future. So, uh, interesting stuff going on. Uh, the final one that placed in our Good Pitch competition is uh, uh, these brothers came up with a weightlifting cloth. I don't know if you've ever lifted weights, but sometimes the weights can slip out of your hands. And so they developed this patented technology. They won this McAllen Innovation Grant, got the 10 grand, uh, filed uh, for a patent and have received the patent. And so you can strap on this cloth to your hand here and it kind of comes down with the cloth and you can grab uh, the bars uh, with that. So, you know, it's not the new Apple computer, uh, but it's uh, fun at the same time. Uh, they've just had their product launch and are trying to get it in stores. Uh, and uh, uh, Sam is a great participant in the INE. Uh, he, uh, another of his jobs is as a musician. So if you want to hire a musician uh, and maybe get a free cloth on a higher degree. <laughs> <laughs> so these are just examples of all the entrepreneurial energy uh, that we have coming out of, out of our uh, community uh, through programs uh, that uh, we didn't have five years ago. Uh, INE got started, I think, five years ago. Pretty much everything else I've talked about just got started after that. We have made, I would argue, a gigantic amount of progress in a very short period of time. So, final takeaway. Uh, our entrepreneurial ecosystem, I would argue, is rapidly developing. We've had, of course, some entities uh, that have been around for a long time and have done a good job. But a lot of what I've talked about here, uh, as I mentioned, have been just created over the last five years. We've also got a lot of things like our entrepreneurship major, our EG, RGB uh, incubator. I uh, haven't launched yet, but will uh, shortly. <coughs> so one thing and one reason I'm very excited to be a professor here uh, at the university is uh, all these things are <coughs> performing and our system is, our entrepreneurial ecosystem is flexible. Uh, and there's lots of room uh, for new leadership in uh, shaping what we're actually doing. Now, if I or, or most of us here went up to Austin. Uh, pretty much the players are already set, the infrastructure is already set. Uh, it's just a matter of, a matter of uh, uh, executing uh, what's already there. Uh, here it's very different. Here we actually have an opportunity. I would argue people here in the audience have an opportunity to actually shape uh, the direction of our entrepreneurial ecosystem. And, and as an entrepreneur, an institutional entrepreneur, uh, I think this is a gigantically uh, exciting opportunity. So uh, I believe uh, in the own valley way that our community can be uh, uh, here, at the UTRGV or the uh, uh, Tech Tuesdays and others who are active participants in our entrepreneurial ecosystem, we can play the same role that Fred Chairman uh, did to Silicon Valley or that George Kazminsky uh, did to Austin. And I put this picture as my last one. I promise in my last one. Uh, <laughs> this is, of course, uh, our uh, uh, home group computer club in 1975. And uh, I feel, uh, in certain ways, like uh, one of these guys in the audience here. I've got less facial hair than most people here. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like one of these uh, guys. And I think we're really on the verge of something special uh, here in the Valley. Uh, I'm not saying we're going to be, again, Silicon Valley, but we can go from core to our entrepreneurship support systems to our educational programs to a lot of what you're involved with uh, to at least good uh, in my lifetime. That's my uh, presentation. Any questions? Yeah. Yeah, you had those uh, three guys, the barbecue guy, but those other guy, the the other the other two with the invention with the slicer and the weight lifting strap, all all those uh, items are going to need engineering. They're going to need someone to do the draft and work on that. How does the university, let's say, get somebody here in the entrepreneurial mindset? They got it thing that they want to produce, 
how does the school work together to say, you know what, well, let's get some, one of your students, you know, it's got this great idea to work with one of the engineering uh, classes and say, you know what, this is really good, we need to make this like a project, who wants to go ahead and you figure out which class it would have to be assigned to or something and, and kind of help the entrepreneur out and at the same time getting real life exposure to creating a product and uh, developing something like that. So I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, one of the, uh, uh, for our entrepreneurship major, the education model we have is Basically, I don't know if you noticed there, but for when our students are seniors, and we're kind of modeling off this, uh, what the engineering uh, college does, is that there is a senior project, a uh, two semester long senior project. And we want our entrepreneurship majors uh, directly meeting and working with uh, that entrepreneur who needs help with this, needs help with the marketing oh, campaign, wow. or needs to polish their pitch uh, before they go pitch the angel network. So wow. we've built that into actually our entrepreneurship major program so we're providing that type of support for the community, but also providing that uh, entrepreneurial experience for uh, our students. Uh, maybe Wendy can also comment about some of the things that goes on within the College of Science and uh, College of Engineering and Computer Science. Yeah, um, one of the things that we have to really directly address those engineering issues is the Center for Manufacturing. And um, there are two aspects. One, you can come in as a community member and talk to them. And um, our students have an opportunity some of them are paid, some do internships there. Um, our student, if someone contacts a faculty member, it may be, in fact, John, Dr. Marshall is meeting with David and a group of students on Tuesday for a project that we're doing in my class. He got contacted through a number of people. The cool. associate dean of the medical school is coming over. Um, he's got an idea. So we're gonna work with him and flush it out. Um, other faculty, ideas to their senior design projects or their senior projects in computer science. And, um, and you facilitate all that? Is that what your role is? Or? Not anymore. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I will, I will take a plug for Fiber Rio. I, I was involved in, with Dr. Sartner and Lozano in getting that process. I was VP for research for a number of years. So the research administration unit also has um, an entrepreneurial uh, group that can be contacted and people that deal with intellectual property and things like that. And given time, they have connections in the community. And so a lot of it is talking about the stories or being there and listening to the stories and sharing in because they were sitting around with their uncle who had a friend who was a woman that needed something for her business and they came up with the idea or they said they would build it. Um, Carla's bringing, is her senior project is something that she's bringing from a need or an interest not only of hers but one that she sees in the community that she lives in and that's what she somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody and who <laughs> likes to know a lot of people that are a lot smarter than they are. <laughs> so this is, uh, I think, currently what we're doing now. Uh, there are ways to improve the system, which, I, uh, which we need to work on in the future. Uh, for example, 
lots of times uh, uh, people from different colleges don't work together seamlessly. Uh, and we need to do a better job of that. And make sure when there's great ideas with senior design, uh, what the technologists are doing, uh, that uh, they need help with marketing or actually forming a business uh, or somebody out there uh, developing their business model or something like that, and taking it over and above just the technology development. Uh, hopefully we've got some skills to do that. One of the parts that we also want to use with our senior design, working with students, uh, the bad thing about it is they graduate. Uh, we can't deliberately fail them uh, to keep them in school uh, when they have a promising project. Uh, so lots of times things uh, uh, that are very promising just get put on the shelf and forgot because the student has graduated, has a job somewhere, uh, making a lot of money, and, and uh, uh, it's no longer a priority. So we want to have also uh, the option uh, if there is something uh, that has potential and, and needs to go that next step before perhaps being something viable, uh, we hope to have some of our uh, entrepreneurship students uh, from that senior project uh, who are also looking at those uh, uh, technology projects that might have life uh, even after a student graduate. There are some intellectual property issues, of course, involved there, uh, but those are some of our aspirations. It, it, technology is great, maybe a great experience for the students, but it's not a business until somebody buys it. So we hope to kind of complete that leg of the process uh, with some of the new structures we're putting in place. Yeah? Something that may help in that regard. Um, I, I graduated, or I don't know if, if I graduated or not. I want to think that I did. <laughs> um, in my senior design, I had a situation where I still have to, we're, we're working together. And But something that I had as a student, I was, I've had access to I'll say, for instance, 1995, senior designs. So 11 years or so, rather 10 years or so of senior designs information, I was able to go in the room, start reading all the senior design, what are electrical engineering, what were computer science, and just have a read of those and be like, oh, well, this one is regard, this is a maximum power point tracker, is something that I'm interested in. I've been doing research on this, let's, let's see what it is about. And then um, that helped me to polish my, my senior design idea. And then maybe that will help to your entrepreneur students. Maybe they, are not, they don't have a polished idea or, or a finished product of what they want to do. But if they have access to that uh, archived information, it will, one, help you out, take the good stuff, those ideas, bring them up, finish them off, and the student will also get the benefit. And if it's a good idea, maybe an investor can uh, push forward for the idea. I remember uh, two years ago, there was uh, this student, he was sponsored to make a more, more <laughs> there, there was this one student who put a motor within, the, uh, within a, one of the bike's tires, hmm. and he was sponsored, and this other partner, he was like, hey, I need you to do this. Would you be able to do this for me, this project? And the student had the enough knowledge to take it and, and finish it. And it's just a matter of having the student informed and having a well partner, a good partner. And yeah. Yeah. Now I have all kinds of uh, possibilities. Yeah. I was going to say, one of the things, too, is when the entrepreneur program is up and running, um, with the formal with the senior component, senior design component of the senior entrepreneurial experience, that will help a lot to facilitate that rolling out or that, that thinking and finishing that product and rolling it out into the community because there'll be a team of people with a broad set of skills, with all the skills that you need. Yeah. That's another way we're designing it and hoping it's going to work out. I think that's like one of the draws to the school and to the valley is just bringing people from across the country here, just from that itself being the school being an entrepreneurial incubator itself of producing products from the beginning to the end and getting it out to market as a group. You know, even if the whole group is the owner, it doesn't matter who owns it, just to be able to get it out and being able to do it, you know, I mean, if everybody does it, everybody owns the product, because everybody's effort is in it. So, you know, how do you divide up, how do you decide who is the owner, what percentage should go where, hey, you come with an idea, entrepreneurs should say, you know, we'll help you finish it, the school's going to have, 
you know, have the school be part owner. I mean, they're part developing it. Have the whole group be like it's a little corporation. You can wind up teaching how to, you know, create the setup, the corporation to, you know, having all of your partners to having, getting it out and having the marketing department owning part of it and taking ownership of the different ideas that get cranked out of here. Yeah. So uh, what we want to do, and, and part of the entrepreneurial ecosystem, uh, lots of times people at universities try to simplify the entrepreneurial ecosystem into things like just uh, business students and entrepreneurial students cooperate. Uh, that's just a very, uh, one part, an important part, but only one part uh, of uh, what we want to do here. One of the reasons I'm so excited about Tech Tuesday is this is a community-led uh, uh, initiative that we're housing here at the university. Mm -hmm. We're finding the seats, kind of some food, but it's really a community-led initiative. I think uh, uh, for been a lot of studies done on entrepreneurial ecosystems, and you just can't have a good university uh, with what universities do. Our basic job is education. Uh, it's not to have entrepreneurial startups. Uh, it is a component of that, but it's not the primary thing we do. Uh, so to have a healthy entrepreneurial ecosystem, we have to have participation from everybody. And that's why I'm so excited with what I was talking about, because now we have cities that are actually engaged in investing in real money setting up the infrastructure that's going to help community-based entrepreneurs be successful. Um, and, uh, you know, I think we've kind of uh, <coughs> evolved into uh, uh, going the right way and institutionalizing all the main components that we need. Oh. That was going to be my question, actually, is that, uh, well, first before that is I saw that in your, in your syllabus or your plan, you had uh, two, two of the electives at the bottom. One was a social entrepreneurship and the other one an uh, internship entrepreneurship. Uh, first question, are we going to get some interns at Code RGB? <laughs> Second question is social entrepreneurs, uh, how, how, what does that involve? But uh, before you answer that question, I guess my bigger question is, do, uh, all this investment and this new competition that all these cities have, do you see that as a risk for community entrepreneurs or do you see that as a benefit? Or stated differently, what's the biggest threat that we could have that would just implode the system? Like maybe all the efforts that you know the community has been doing, or or even individually the I and E, or even Mission Brewery Adventures. Like, what's the biggest threat to the to the environment that you, you that you might foresee? Uh, in my world, this is just my world. I've only seen part of it. My uh, biggest fear uh, is that uh, we have a dean now who's actively supporting entrepreneurship. Uh, he's only going to be here probably for a couple of years until we get. Uh, accreditation, uh, and then uh, uh, the way I understand it, he's, he's uh, uh, rotating out after that. If we get a dean uh, after that within the College of Business and Entrepreneurship, it's not an active support uh, of uh, the entrepreneurial ecosystem. I think that is what I see as the biggest uh, threat uh, to at least uh, a part of the world I'm playing in. Uh, uh, so, but uh, you're a part about the, the cities and whether they're uh, Cities competing against each other is a bad thing. I think it's a fantastic thing. Uh, the more uh, we can do to have uh, cities actively invested in developing entrepreneurs, I think the more the better. It's kind of like uh, Texas A&M coming to town. I would love Texas A&M maybe to convince them uh, to have some kind of entrepreneurship program there also. I think the more uh, the better. We've got all this potential uh, and we've got a long ways to go before we really create yeah, I just kind of want a, a follow-up, I guess, sitting in a, in a different perspective in, in the world and having looked. At, I'm, I'm more from a corporate finance, uh, uh, large small business and small middle market area here in the Valley. And I, I guess my answer to almost question, and although I've <laughs> talked about this, you already know what's coming. Um, the start with the Angel Network is a phenomenal start. But just... Yesterday, uh, one of your counterparts at St. Edwards, along with the Austin Chamber of Commerce, I don't know if you saw this blurb today, but basically has done an analysis of the Austin, which is the number one uh, startup funding uh, metro area in the country, mm -hmm. um, is failing at um, early stage and growth funding. Because there's not, there's not the, there's not the capital market uh, level in Austin 
to keep the funding going once you get past the angel stage. And so I, I've already I've reached out to him because that's what I see in the valley um, in, in working with businesses that are already in that middle market or, or late growth stage is the money in the capital market sophistication is absent. Not, not just weak, absent in this market. And that's one of the things that I think we have to work on uh, here in the Valley is developing a financial, an entrepreneurial financial literacy and a, a capital markets ecosystem to support entrepreneurial businesses that are already here as well as the ones coming on. So the startups are sexy and fun to talk about, yeah. but they got to keep going after that stage. So I have a question for you. Uh, are you talking about that there's uh, uh, the financial uh, entities here in the Valley are not willing to uh, lend money to that group or that group is not able to present their case in a compelling way? Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, yes to both and. Um, I think the more serious one that I see all the time is the second one. The, 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 second, the, the second one is, is a serious one, and that's, that's where my consulting practice is focused, is, is, <laughs> is a CFO consultant, is, is build, getting the tools in the hands of the entrepreneur so that they can make their case. But the uh, community banks are not the answer to financing entrepreneurial businesses. Uh, investment banking, venture capital, m and are the answer to financing those businesses. And we don't have that in, in any real form, uh, venture capital, private equity, in this region. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you look, at, I did a, uh, w for MEDC, I did a, a survey as part of the presentation I did for them a while back. Um, if you look at the Valley as a 1.3 million population metro area, um, and you compare us to our peer groups that are metro areas that are plus or minus 100,000 population to us. Um, all of those peer group metro areas have two, to, if, if you, I kind of broke it down into stages of uh, businesses between five and 10 million in revenue, businesses 10 to 25, 25 to 50, 50 to 100, 100 and up. At every stage, we have fewer than half of the number of businesses at that stage than our peer metro areas have. And we also have z essentially zero of uh, private equity, venture capital, M&A firms, whereas all of those other metro areas have 5, 10, 15, 20 firms, local firms. I'm not talking about the investment banking arm of Bank of America or or, sure. or Chase because they're not really here. They have an office here, but they're the, the people are in Houston or Dallas or, or New York. But but firms that are physically here, we don't have that. I think that's one of the things that, that we have to do uh, again, maybe at the at the EDC level and something I'm pushing hard on uh, with with McAllen Economic Development Corporation to work on is creating a financial ecosystem to support the entrepreneurial ecosystem. I, I certainly agree that money is an important component of uh, a healthy entrepreneurial ecosystem. Um, at the same time, uh, I think the, the weakness I've seen is that uh, we need to have more firms uh, that are deserving of funds uh, at that kind of mid-stage level and can present their case in a convincing way. And I would argue that we may not have those locally, uh, but you know, just drive up the road to San Antonio uh, or Houston or Dallas uh, or Austin uh, and hit the creme de la creme of uh, people who, who do that. And you have to compete against the standards that they're using. Uh, so I'd argue that you would have to have the entrepreneurs who are capable of doing that first, and then we'll attract those types of financial institutions. Until then, at least I think we've got a pretty good solution as far as getting in and driving up the road. That'd be my argument. I absolutely agree with you. You sound like Keith Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been training Keith to say the right things. <laughs> I'm very excited about what I'm hearing on this entrepreneur program. It's exactly the direction we need to be going, in my opinion, and uh, in the opinion of many other people that I've talked with. And uh, 
I'm also very pleased with what I'm hearing about you trying to develop cross-communication with other divisions uh, in the university. Having come from a university background myself, I understand how sometimes those little enclaves uh, don't talk to each other. And you have to have that because bright young guys like these don't always have the economic background of how to market and program their great idea. So you've got to have that cross connection. Now I'm also cautiously optimistic from some of your remarks that you are working on this town gown situation, which of course uh, uh, has been a problem before in past history, uh, whether it is now or not. But you said that you were talking to Mission EDC, FAR EDC, I assume Keith Patridge and McAllen uh, EDC. I, I deal with Steve more than I deal with Keith. What? I deal with Steve uh, at the chamber Steve. more than I do with Keith. Okay, and Steve Alenius. Well, you ought to talk more with Keith Patridge, in my opinion, too. And you also need to know some of these other groups that are working for a more regional uh, approach because uh, the very comment, uh, I think maybe you said, or maybe both of you did, what we have on both sides of the river, the population base, is phenomenal. And we have so much in common, and we need to work as a unit. And we, are, we have so many groups here and there that I've talked with who are saying this, they know this, that's how we got UTRGB in the first place. And we have to, do it in more areas, and I'm cautiously optimistic. How much are you reaching out to uh, town entities to try to foster this kind of uh, thing? So uh, I work as part of a team, uh, and we have others uh, such as Zardine, uh, Mark Kroll, uh, and Laura Simons, who's worked with the uh, uh, Texas Submerging Technology Fund, uh, who are much more communicative uh, with some of those entities. Uh, I get gigantically excited about working with a student who's got a great idea uh, and trying to move uh, their project along. So that's a very local, one-on-one -on -one, uh, type but of But that's where it has to start. Uh, it has to start with the student. Uh, we don't have and anything to sell, but they have a great the student. The mentor like you, who is getting that student up and coming. Yeah. But uh, I hope that somewhere along the line you have some people working on this town gown thing, which apparently you do. Uh, I believe we do. And uh, certainly, uh, <laughs> yeah, something that I found interesting is that most of the entrepreneurship guys is that they speak about how to get money and, and the ones that we have a design of a device, we need to hire an, an engineer to, to, to build it. And the good thing is that I, I know that the people here, they want to get together with the entrepreneurship business with the people from here, uh, but related to technology. I'm in the side of the technology. I'm doing a master's in engineering and science. But the thing is that, okay, if some entrepreneur guy comes to me with the help, I need to learn about, I need to develop a drone or a call or something. Inside of the school, I can find out the answers. I can look into what's the commercial stuff. I can look into what's more deep into what the article, article the journal is. And that's what, 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 they, what they need because if, if we as a society want to create a company or something really big, we actually, I believe that we need to be on the top of the technology. But outside of the, of the school, I cannot do it. If I want to find a patent or if I want to find articles regarding some, some uh, topic of technology, I can only do it inside of the networking of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the university. I don't know if I haven't checked out if the library of the Macaulay has it, but it will be really fun, it will be really nice that um, the leading entrepreneur look into this, like how can we get any people Got the got the inside of those articles and journals and be ready to with the all the information to develop something really great that it is for sure. Something like that. I, I believe that it's something that we need to be thinking as well, uh, because every like IEEE, ACM, or many institutions that, that that they have these articles and journals, it costs a lot of money to be a member and be able to get them. And to be honest, as an entrepreneur, I don't think that I'm gonna have like a I don't know, a thousand bucks free just to write these 10 different or nine different associations to get the information. I mean, it's a lot of money. So, so that's one of the things that... So if I understand your uh, question correctly, it's like when you graduate, 
uh, and you're no longer a student at UTRGV, you're going to have a difficulty accessing exactly. some information. And, and I'm supposed to do that for the rest of my life because that's why I study that. So how would an entrepreneur solve that problem? Huh? How would an entrepreneur solve that problem? An entrepreneur, well, most, most of the people, they, they just go with the engineering, engineers because they think they have their kids about that. How an entrepreneur will solve that? Um, not so so uh, uh, to answer my question, <laughs> If you need access to something at the university after you graduate, come talk to me. I'll be more than happy to. Uh, I have another. I have a workaround too. I have another workaround too. <coughs> uh, what you can go, uh, do is you can go to the Small Business Development Center, and they have access to all the journals and even some uh, really highly costly like catalogs of like statistics and business information. So what I'm doing now is. Uh, I basically just say, here, I need this research. <laughs> and they do, they do the research for you and they give you the results. And since it is business related, like you're developing business, it's within their, it's within their. That's what they get paid to do. That's what they get paid to do. So you, <coughs> if, if at any point in time you have like a business thing that you need to research, in particular, like I need to find these patents, I need to do these, they'll, they'll look it up for you. They, they won't go to the IEEE journals, but you can do, I can help you with how to do Google Scholar searches for PDFs of the, the scholars. You don't, have, you don't, there's really various ways to get it. And you can also contact the professor directly. Can I get a copy of your PDF? And you can get it that way too. So yeah, I, there's, there's cheap ways around that issue. And furthermore, I didn't answer the comment from Anna and almost. Uh, currently I'm working in a relationship Governmental and, and governmental and community relations division. And we have a, a small branch which is called SNRC, Southwest Border Education, so Southwest Nonprofit Organization. Uh -huh. And back then, um, I'm saying last year, it was pretty much closed. Nobody could get in and get information from the foundation, grant makers, and all that information that the entrepreneurs may need or an engineer startup thingy, it was closed, and not many people get access to that. And then once you graduate, you don't belong anymore to the university, and now it's gonna be harder to get information from, from that grant maker foundation. So, yeah, it, it, is, it is hard out there, and my solution will be take as much advantage as you can while you're still here. I don't know, if, uh, I'm pretty sure you know Gabriela, the president of the CEO of the student chapter. Uh, she went there because of some test situation with the student booth. And then I was telling her, well, what kind of other fundraisers besides selling candy in the in this student booth you may you, you do? Uh -huh. I asked her. And she was like, well, I don't have any other fundraisers. We do these small things, but besides that, we don't have anything. And I was like, what about you make an appointment here with the SNRC? and give that grant maker um, proposal to just get found from somebody else. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. Now there are, there are tremendous re resources at the university and uh, uh, there are uh, ways to access uh, those. Uh, we have been uh, far from perfect with our support of uh, nonprofit organizations and providing uh, help with uh, grants for small uh, nonprofits, uh, some of which you're involved with. Uh, our aspiration is to do much better. <laughs> How, well, that's oh. How unique is this entrepreneurial program that you're setting up to the state of Texas? So uh, we are, and that's one thing that uh, helps us is uh, presence in provost look around the state. Uh, within the state of Texas, at Baylor, at TCU, at UT Austin, there are gigantically good um, entrepreneurship programs. So we are way behind them. We're trying to catch up as quickly as possible. One, however, you, a somewhat unique aspect of what we're doing is embedding uh, the senior project where uh, our entrepreneurship students are actually going to work with entrepreneurs uh, uh, for six credit hours when they're seniors, uh, facilitate commercialization projects and other types of things. Uh, that is not common within entrepreneurship programs uh, around the state or around the country or around the world. So if we can pull that off, uh, uh, that would be something relatively unique. I think something uh, very good about it.